Hey, what's up, fellas? The following video archive exhibits the research and development process of an exotic thermal cracking pulse jet engine that I'm working on. This one's going to be going in my waste oil burner book. This is basically what we started off with. This is a 22 and a quarter inch barrel on a four inch by five inch combustion chamber. Nothing fancy, I just wanted to see what it would do. I did de design my own little intake system for this bad boy, something a little bit different than what you'll see out there, but I still didn't like what we got. So I went ahead and chopped five inches off the barrel because this is only generating one pound of thrust. So I got to take in, we got to chop some off the barrel. So I took five inches off the barrel here and that doubled the thrust alone. Just chopping five inches off the barrel gave us two pounds of thrust. Was very impressed with that, but I knew we could do better. So I decided, why don't we thermally crack the propane and turn it into ethylene and propylene. And look what happens. Look how much hotter that thing's burning when you're running ethylene, propylene, and methane versus propane. It's incredible. So I decided to take this a step further and shroud it. This is where we are in the lab book so far. This stuff's going in the waste oil burner book, so have to have some details, man, just to kind of see the improvement of it all. Okay, I just did two wraps. You don't want to overdo it. We don't want to go past 2192 Fahrenheit. I don't know if she can handle it. We'll find out, though. I've, I've been curious a long time about this product anyway. I've always wanted to give this stuff a shot on a lot of different builds, actually. We don't have the best lighting for this test, but um, I've got a full tank, and it's very cold out, unfortunately. This is kind of going to not be the best, but... Um, I just got to beat two pounds of thrust, and I'm not a loser. All right, guys, the coil did make it harder to light because it's acting like a, a buffer. It's less responsive now because that coil is acting like a fuel reservoir. However, we are getting 2.5 pounds of thrust, and this thing isn't even fully heated up yet. This is awesome. We've gained a half pound. We're not even done. All right, that might be the end of the thrust testing. We've melted the gauge. That's why we shut down the test. Look at the soot we're getting off that hot gas that's still leaking out of there. So evidence of thermal crackings right there, guys. I don't know if you can see that soot production or not. Oh, it's stuck at three pounds of thrust. Oh, it's hot. That's a beautiful sight. Does that count? If it's melted in place, is that... A legitimate record book indication. Okay, so I stepped away from the device for a while. Um, I don't know that we can count this. The gauge is melted at um, three pounds of thrust, which is amazing. I don't know if I should give us that, though. I don't know if I'm going to give it to us, fellas. I don't want to cheat. It's over three pounds. All right, so during editing, I noticed a problem that I felt during assembly of the linear bearing. And look at that. See that uh, grind mark right there? <laughs> so this thing was kind of leaned down dragging on this and that's with the vibration of this, of this thing humming that may have been negligible but nonetheless it's hanging up my linear bearings hanging up when it's rolling flat it's okay her other enemy is bottle pressure. This is a brand new bottle. It is a lot colder out. We were running around 85, 90 PSI's there towards the end. So whether or not all this was worth it, unfortunately, is yet to be determined. We did get 
half pound of thrust right off the bat. Half a pound of thrust more, but still. I don't know. We'll have to take a look at that flame profile tonight. And if we don't have a good flame coming out of this thing, I don't know. So we're getting phenomenal performance out of this thing, guys. I think we're able to dump far more fuel into it because I was able to flame this thing out when I dumped too much propane in it with the very large 55,000 um, spuds. So you can't put too much propane in it, but with this, I'm not able to drown it with fuel. The thermal cracking has gave us the opportunity to dump far more fuel into this thing than we would otherwise because of the upper and lower combustion limits of ethylene, propylene, and methane. They're all much more compatible with pulse jet engine operation also. Methane is said to give a pulse jet engine a higher frequency as you increase fuel, whereas the opposite is true with propane. That makes sense because the upper uh, limit is being reached. Look at that nice flame on that thing, man. That's like a good seven, eight inch flame there. So this thing's gonna strip some paint off the parking lot just fine, I think. We may even convert it to liquid propane combustion by adding an additional vaporizer coil around the barrel. But uh, it made it harder to light with this stuff on there, guys. I am gonna build another one for the thrust testing we're gonna do for the waste oil burner book, nonetheless. And the other one may be the one that ends up on a stick turned into a tool. It's just so much easier to light. I just turned it up all the way right there to maximum fuel. Um, it, it is kind of easy to light the way it is now, but you got to learn how to do it. And I, I want this thing to be user friendly, so I don't, I'm certainly not going to cut the coil off of this one. It's too cool. It, it isn't that hard to light, for crying out loud. It's, it's easy to light. It's just not as easy to light as it was with um, that coil off. Here's just a quick recap for you guys who are late to the show. The reason why I'm thermally cracking the propane is because I want to produce methane and ethylene for the simple fact that the combustion lower and upper limit for methane is higher than that of propane, which means we could burn a fuel mixture of 17% methane and the balance air, whereas with propane, you can only burn 9.6% propane. If you were trying to burn 10% propane and 90% air, it will not burn. So by converting to these two gases, ethylene is even better, allowing us to burn up to 28.6%. Ethylene has a higher flame velocity as well. If we get up to 2192 Fahrenheit, we start to crack the methane and turn it into hydrogen gas, which has an even higher velocity and an even higher combustion ratio upper and lower limit. Um, so that's kind of where this is going. I thought this was really neat that we could do this. And if you've never seen ethylene combust before, you might want to check it out on YouTube. I don't want to steal that guy's fame. It was a pretty cool little demonstration he puts on. So this is kind of some of the figures that led me to believe this was definitely plausible because we can pump more propane into this burner because we're cracking it into these two gases. Um, one of the commenters said this is also making propylene. Man, your name's on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, there he is. This guy's been around for a long time. Old school commenter right there. All right, fellas, so this testing is definitely gonna be bringing us into some other research. I've already got some ideas for some forge and foundry burners, more so foundry burners. They're going to be using this principle to melt cast iron without oxygen. I think we're going to be seeing some pretty cool research in this direction. However, just to let you guys know what I'm up to here, I am not a pulse jet enthusiast. This video has nothing to do with pulse jets. This is a parking lot tool that's going to be used by a paving company to strip parking lot paint off of parking lots and to help melt asphalt and to melt the cracks on asphalt and blow the rocks and stuff out of the cracks so they can retar it. It's not really a pulse jet toy or a, you know, we're not gonna be flying any model airplanes. This is gonna be an actual tool. So not so sure I'm gonna go with the extra hassle of doing the thermal cracking on this tool. 
I'm gonna end up building another one. And this thing's gonna be hooked onto a stick, like a shovel. Might have a little wheel on it. 